Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where things are obvious. <laughs> That's going to be an intro. All right, welcome to... Wait. Yeah, no, are we supposed to do cold open? Yeah, opens? it is cold open. Are we still doing that? And going back to what I was saying before about Sonic, uh, but shifting over, if you look at <laughs> Mario, no, get the, get, that get is Sonic totally out of my cold it, open. an objectification get, get of game. a meritocracy get that does not benefit game. because get he has no place out of my, in the Mushroom uh, Kingdom. No, get out of my but open. He is there get and out of my action, open. He becomes the... <laughs> because that's how it starts. Welcome to Isn't, <laughs> Welcome to Isn't It Obvious. Fuck this you, is your Sarah. intro. That's all I'm going to do. Yeah. Fuck all you. I'm so surly tonight. Isn't it obvious that stock market is just a measure of rich people feeling and not actually a good economic health indicator for our society? Yes. Good episode. <laughs> it's no. Just rich people feeling. No, no. I mean, it's just how rich people feel about the world. You cannot have and... the GDP plummet by 32% in the second quarter of 2020. And still have the stock market make money. That should not happen. The stock market's uh, tally system is merely the riches, like, high score. Like, rich people's high score is yep. the stock market. That's it. It has zero application like, eh, on the actual economy. Fine. We're okay. We can afford our next meal. We don't have to worry about rent. So, stock market's great. Well, everyone else is, you know, starving and... The stock market... Not sure if they're going to get, you know, their next rent payments. You know, it, yeah. Yep. Stock market no, I, I is funded. the justification for the con of capitalism. That's all. All right. I, I have to interject here as the only conservative in this, in this group. <laughs> I, I have to say that like the stock market isn't some uh, measuring stick for the health of a country. Uh, GDP is also not a very good measuring stick either. Um, your GDP increases if you charge people for health care services. That's a good thing, right? Because the GDP is increasing because goods and services are exchanging hands. But it doesn't really make sense for the people. That's a different discussion. But like the the beautiful part about the stock market really is about investing. And the problem is, is that too many people are kind of understanding the game. Whereas if you pull your money out when the economy is bad, you will be selling at a steep penalty. At so, a loss. I mean, yep. At a no, loss. Not necessarily. Like at a loss. Depending on when you initial True. bought and what gains you had prior to True. the economic collapse. True. You're right. You're well, right. The moment you sell is the moment it the, the wave length collapses and that is actually the worth of your stock right? like the problem with pet mm, i'm getting ahead of myself if you would just hold it and then five years later the stock market stabilizes and then you sell it at, at that point now that's going to be the point where the money that uh, of what it's actually worth because it's all based off rich the, people feelings not rich people feelings but, but, but basically like, sure? rich people feelings no are you sure because the last, what else mm, how is facebook time worth had, more than a dollar of stock it's not worth more than that. <laughs> I feel like you guys don't. Okay, let me let me dial this back. Go ahead. In 2008, people, a lot of the middle class people pulled their money out of the stock market, including their like unfortunate cases of their 401k because they were afraid that it was going to keep going down. And so the moment they sell, it, it becomes actualized. That is the sell price. And then four years later, the stock market stabilizes and now they can't even catch up with the rising tide because they just sold. So like this is a stupid decision. If they would have just stayed with it, they wouldn't have help, had the losses. Now back to the fact that we're in this year, I think people have learned, like at least the middle class have learned not to sell when it's low because if you just stick with it, it'll go back to normal. We're talking about sell Especially low, buy high. That's how you make money in the stock market. Well, the problem is back in 2008, and I know you're being facetious, <sighs> is that people <laughs> react emotionally. Like they're, they're really afraid that like it's going to get lower and lower and therefore they have to sell. So like the idea that the stock market is just rich people feelings is a nice trope to start with but in reality a lot of people's middle class people's pensions and not pensions but the retirement fund is based off the stocks is based off mid-market capital is based off bonds is based off getting some level of investment in many companies and they're just waiting their time for a good time to sell when they have to retire if you're playing that way but the whole point is return of investment that's it that's the whole idea of the dow that's the whole idea of the nasdaq of anything else can this company in five years time produce x amount of growth back what is your return on investment? Right, but how does that factored into the fact that throughout the Bush presidency, the Obama presidency, and into the Trump presidency, you have taxpayer money going into the stock market to artificially inflate it so 
it, it doesn't collapse and you don't have those sell-off actions. You're having government intervention into a thing to maintain confidence that the system we have is still working, even though it's inherently broken. And to, to keep honest, rich people let's just, happy. Let's just, let's just be honest here. Money itself is a confidence game. It's, it is literally meaningless well, except no, for the fact that we no. have confidence M in Money it. meant something up until Nixon took us off the gold standard. At it that did. point, money True. meant nothing anymore because it's what nothing. we said it was yep. and we have the biggest military yep. so money is what we say it is so tell us what it yeah tell us what it is okay because we have no tangible assets just... like we have oh, uh, 25 trillion dollars in debt that's never going to be collected ever okay i feel like you guys are just getting my goat intentionally here like when it came to the nixon removing us from the gold standard and removing us from a fiat, like removing us from a gold standard to a fiat currency, fine. Like I agree that that's when things kind of got off the rails, and we could just use our money printers at um, warp speed to print out more dollars for us for circulation. But I, I'm not going to just go ahead and say that that's our like gold itself is a con confidence game, right? But gold like, itself is still a tangible useful? asset that we as a human species throughout our history have deemed it has value period well whether yeah, that I mean, value is constant of... is different but Same that paper money, precious though. metal has value because it's, it's the same species value have it, as or have right, stated it's, that. Just, it's the same thing as why silver has value or copper or something but that's else, di right? like the whole point of why the weimar republic failed was in order to pay back military reparations from world war one they literally just printed money to give it away, but they were still on a gold standard. So that made the Germans' gold worthless. And that's why yeah, you had weird bellers also... full, because they still had a tangible asset in precious metals tied to their currency. America right, would have pretty... fallen if we had that same type of thing with the mass inflation we had if Nixon didn't yep. take us off the gold standard. You can't eat, you can't eat gold. I, I agree, it just but sits the gold there and looks pretty. by itself is just another layer of the confidence game, right? Like, why do we consider gold to be... <laughs> it's I think useful, Warren like, the same can, thing. like, it's a good it conductor. And 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 pretty. It doesn't really collect upon itself. It doesn't have any, like, yeah. energy or, like, ability to create... No, yes. but it, it, it's still a matter of bartering. Correct. The earliest it's form of economy yeah. is bartering, and you would trade is... something of wheat for something that was not wheat. Yeah, but again, it's just why would you it's consider however, five it's bushels of wheat rather than ten for heads. this one nugget of gold? Rather, you're like it's still just this is a pretty thing that that looks nice, and that's why. It's also it's the same problem with fiat currency. I mean, basically, it's just a a, a thing we all dilute ourselves that it has some worth. The problem with investing in gold is that it doesn't really give you a good return of investment compared to like investing in Amazon or Apple or Google or some other company that's that's able to redirect its revenue to more R&D to produce something that more people want, therefore getting more product shipped out, therefore getting more dollars, and then being able to pay the dividend. This makes sense as a company. But right? then most bigger. of their profits are based on the fact that the U.S. does not regulate internet sales well, and the fact that they keep a lot of stuff they should be paying taxes oh, on that yes. would cut into their profits. Yep. So right. you I mean, also that's... have more government influence and lobbying affecting an artificial construct to make amazon seem more profitable than it actually is because influence. of the corners because that they cut not in interfering it's, 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 in amazon's the, you know products <laughs> yeah and amazon is paying yeah. a lot of lawyers so to really influence, uh, amazon, a lot of people in the amazon senate to not have the them pay their fair share but, but you're, you're with that way you just... have government influence into a private company yeah but it's the same thing for okay i'm not gonna say what about is them Monopoly. Yes, that's, yep. the, that's one of the problems with big companies and big industries in general. Insert oil, insert military industrial complex, insert anything. I think tech is just kind of the poster child or the punching bag right now. But, you know, I, you can bet Alcoa had done this in the past. So had Standard Oil and so had so many other companies. Yep. Uh, because the company's best return of investment is lobbying. That's just yeah. a the people in power. Um, Why so, waste your time with the population yeah. when you only have to bribe 50% right. of 535 people? But the biggest issue with like the, the way that we look at the stock market and say, oh, it's just rich people money, is that it's not quite true. It's money that the middle class is investing either in their, if anyone pays a 529 or a 401k or just plays the stock market long term or medium term, it's the idea that you're putting money in as a hedge against inflation because inflation rats are just going to eat your money regardless. You have to <laughs> invest it. Otherwise, Otherwise you're losing. Uh, you could put it in a CD. You could put it in a bond. You could put it even in like companies release loans as well, yeah, right? But they're not as secure yeah. depending if they bankrupt. So like everyone is looking to get an edge. I Iran has a very particular problem in this too, where they are only allowed, the citizens are only allowed to go and invest 
in their version of the stock market. They can't invest in the FTSE or the Hong Kong. They, they're only allowed in that nation to invest in that nation. And so it never goes down because their citizens, citizenry are not dumb people. They also understand the concept of inflation wraps. So if you just put all your money in a mattress, it'll eventually decay. It will literally lose its value because things are just more expensive year after year. Mm -hmm. So what are you to do if you're in the middle class? Like you would have to invest it, but what? Everything has risk. So it's not like rich people's money. It's just everyone who understands the game of, I cannot be just sitting on money. I have to put it in a situation where it can at least match inflation so I don't lose. What's my best option? And then that's the stock market is as it is today, as long as you have a cool head. I mean, if the stock market completely crashes to the point where it's completely useless, you have bigger problems on your hands and you should have invested in ammo and beans. Right? <laughs> so like, but if you're a normal person, you wouldn't do this. I'm not saying the preppers aren't normal, but preppers aren't listening to us anyway. So but I don't know. think it's a rich person problem, rich person money issue. It's a shit. I have money or I don't have money, but I need to be able to invest it because it's going to just be eaten by inflation. And especially when the Federal Reserve just starts printing cash like it's nobody's business. What are you supposed to do then? So next year, a car is going to cost, um, instead, of, instead of 25, it's going to cost 30,000. Things just go up in price. So Phil, are you telling me that the stock market is a good indicator of economic health in a country the stock market is not meant for economic health the stock so it's market... a better measure of rich people feelings not than rich a, people than a measure yeah. of based on percentage a measure of... of average income of people <laughs> that actually invest in the stock market there is a gigantic discrepancy between your concept of the middle class investing in the stock market and those that have much more means in order to invest in the stock market do you have any stocks Phil? I only have my 401k. I don't play the stock market because I'm too much of a coward. But if I did play the stock market, it's be I, I, I would look at it as a terms of flat out risk so, reward. So Not Micah, do feeling. you have any stocks? Do you think I have money? Do you put any money away for anything? No, but my mattress is very, savings. very firm. So... <laughs> so I, you know, I put money into a Roth IRA mm -hmm. for retirement, right? So that's its own sort of mild investment but it's not i wouldn't consider that really the stock market i also wouldn't consider a 401k straight up stock market well, why wouldn't you consider that i mean like a per certain percentage when you're younger is playing stocks and a small amount of it is bonds you are i don't know how you set up your roth or anyone sets up their 401k it's... but usually you say i want the mid cap market right and i want yep. aggressive or medium then they're going to go pick out stocks for yes. you. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So you and that's, are playing that's, the stock. So yes, I am. But it's... Well, you're not playing the stocks. Not... You're paying someone to play the stocks. Yes. Exactly. But you are that's... by proxy playing the stocks. Exactly. But yes. not because so... you're not influencing where your money's going. You're totally sure. ceding that so... to somebody else's work. Which is, so, yeah. which is so, like, the right that's way why to do I would... it. Sorry, go ahead. That's why I'm... It's the... It is, but it isn't. the st... Like, it's not me playing the stock game. It's, it's just me hoping that... The person I'm trusting to play the stock game will be responsible with my money and I will be able to retire <laughs> at some point. At the end of the day, you have put well, money into the stock. No retirement. <sighs> yeah. At the end of the day, you put money into a stock environment. You, you're not personally picking them out, but you are going to benefit from when it grows dividends. It's not yes. about a feeling. It's simply about risk and reward. Like when I look at the stock market as it is today, it's a simple game of trying to outfox each other. Well, good luck on that, you fools, because there are <laughs> very good foxy people out there that are going to outfox you. That's their job. There are like, certainly I, foxy people out there, and most of them are our listeners. Definitely. Thanks, Mom. But the issue oh, is... Oh, you guys make it weird. Come on, Whoa. Phil. <laughs> the issue here is that you don't try to pick the stocks that are going to be based off timing, right? Like, you could if you're going to be like a Wall Street bets type of guy. Fair enough. But you actually should just pick boring stocks that grow over time. And you may lose some, you may win some, but you have to play the game at, and do a spread risk to minimize mm -hmm. the amount of penalties that you may receive if something performs less than normal. You're hoping something yeah, but in that, better. you as a middle class American are gambling, essentially, with the stock market at that point because you have no influence on the game itself. Unlike those that have money that have influence in the game. Yeah, it's you more don't, of a faith game. <laughs> you don't really want to go into a dogfight with people that are going to time the market. Like Those are people influencing it and they will win because they can influence it in ways that are basically manipulating so you would have a case where you have someone who is a promoter so he gets 10 rich friends 
and he's going to go pick up one stock and he's going to promote it and they're going to boost it up. So suddenly this thing went from $50 to 60. Holy shit, that's a big deal. So now more people are jumping in. So now it's going to be 60 to 70. The promoter says, cut your bets to the rich 10 people. They just made 20 out of 70 bucks out of 50, the original investment. That's a pretty good deal. And then now they take all the cash away and now the company has a bad a delta. And so that's, that's the people you're playing against. If you're playing short term, you know, Wall Street bet style, I'm going to be putting in my bets now and then cashing yeah. out later. Like, this is a stupid so, way to play But then isn't the best game. investment... It's all by do... feelings, though, then, isn't it? No, no, no. This no, is... but then isn't the best <laughs> investment cycle to just do it on a day-to-day -day basis? You no. find something that's on a rise, you heavily invest, and you get out before the closing bell. No, because you are playing against people who are professionally doing this. It's like going to the Olympics and you're going against a professional boxer. What you would rather do is the slow burn method of diversifying your risk and then just sitting there and being bored. That's the right way to do it because then you're not going to have ulcers about the ups and downs. You're just going to know that over time that things usually increase between somewhere to 4 to 8%. But guess what? That's better than inflation. And some of your bets might lose and some of your bets might go wild. But that's just the, on average, you are with the market as long as you pick boring, convenient stocks. And that's actually true. That's exactly what a 401k, a Roth IRA, whatever, that, that's exactly what that is. And that's basically. not on feelings. That's just on risk and reward. Like the people true. that go in there by feelings, there are very, you know, but, risk But the stock people. market itself is influenced by feelings. Absolutely. It's how confident people are in buying. I would say that... Or, in a company, basically. The stock market is based off of risk and perceived risk. And risk, and people have... Which is feelings. Which, Perceiving feelings, yes, yes. And people need, it's, it's a game of the princess that. bride, and they have two cups of poison, right? Like, yep. which one is it? And I'm trying to outguess you. But it's um, both. <laughs> and so there is, they're both poison. They're both poison. <laughs> and, and so there is a concept here that like, oh, it's, it's based off feelings. Like I have to feel you out, right? I have to kind of understand where you are at so I have a better position. I'm going to try to out jockey you here. But, or the fucking CEO does something really stupid and suddenly everyone has wants nothing to do with the company and they just lose in the stock market for like Or a you few have weeks. Elon Musk going out there saying he doesn't like how high his stock is and that spurs the sell off. Yeah. These are one off shit like, like that. This reminds me of like um, the vocal minority where like, oh, I'm going to paint a picture on just some of the cherry pick news because and that the whole industry is like that. They're all a bunch of thieves or they're all like this type of but personality. Like because you, that's the, you don't the just have the one bias. like the one uh, the one example of Elon Musk saying something and then his stock plummets by 20 percent or whatever it fell on that day is a symptom of how volatile the market can be and that those that have influence there. So I'm sure. He probably sold off a fair amount of stocks before he sent out that tweet or whatever references. You have that's, some of you have, you have influence from those that have more means to affect it, and yeah, they will win over people that are investing on day to day basis. That's 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 a bingo right there. We don't say that. We just say bingo. What I'm saying here is that if you pick stocks that are exciting, then you're playing a different game. And I would agree with you. That's based uh, about risk and perceived risk, right? You're you're trying to be. There's a lot of reward here that you can get on, on silly games, um, right? But there's hard. also a lot of risk. And so you're playing Tesla, like, guess what? That's not stable. This is a, this is a lot of people that are playing, I'm going to outfox you because they're not as stable as Toyota. These people make cars for a, quite a long time. They're pretty boring, but they're reliable. So the idea that we say, oh, well, I'm going to cherry pick this point of data and Tesla seems very exciting. So the whole market is like Tesla. No, that is just one small little player in a big big market so like the market being perceived by feeling is yeah you have some players that are like that but the vast majority of them should be boring slow behemoth boring moves and that's where you would probably if you want to be risk seeking and you want to play that then that's fine you can go for the startups and try to be like a venture capitalist of sorts i guess right, or if well, you want to go, going to a different tech what about the tart everyone program take your in 2008? Everyone, everyone take your financial advice from philip right now Do no that. i do don't that. take the financial <laughs> advice from someone and then in the internet, blame him when it fool. goes wrong. Right. You gotta go to a certified financial advisor or go to YouTube and look for two See, cents. Take his advice. Two Absolutely cents. take his Never advice. Never take my advice. I'm a goddamn <laughs> fool. But that being said, the market isn't driven just by rich people's feelings. If yes, you look at the is. tarp, okay, let's look at the tarp from 2008. Like that is a very good example of banks just fucking it up for everybody because they did derivatives and they did the bets against the derivatives. And they have insurances on those. It's like 
basically what they're doing is I'm going to make a bad bet and I'm going to place insurance on it. And I'm going to have an underwriter give you a contract that if I <laughs> place a bad bet, you're going to give me money. It's like, okay, well, that's stupid. What are you going to place your bad bet on? I'm going to bet that Toyota is going to fail next year. And I'm going to bet $100 million or something ridiculous like that. But you're going to be my insurance company. I'm going to pay you $10 million a year. But this, and this bet is going to end in one year. You take the bet. The insurance company is going to be like, yeah, absolutely. Toyota is never going to fail in one year's time. I'll take that $10 million from you. You're going to lose your bet, but I'm going to make money as an insurance company. Off we go. The issue with the TARP, and, and this is kind of like the big short uh, or you know that, that silly movie that they had, is that people kind of caught on that, yeah, insurance companies can fail. And then when that happens, all shit will break loose. So how are you supposed to stop a run on the banks? And so what you would do is you just give the banks a shit ton of money on the promise that they're going to pay you back with interest. So you give them a trillion dollars. But that flies in the face of what the stock market is there for as its means of healthiness of companies based on a capitalist uh, economic plan. Correct. Yes. The idea of a healthy economy in this game is that you let people who are very risk seeking people eat their dog food. Right. Yeah. But like you, the you, TARP bailout plan, those uh, banks should have eaten dog food on their horrible bed. But because of yes. a broken system to artificially inflate the wealth of rich people, it was bailed out and they got fucking fully mignon. <laughs> yes. And I that would say is that wrong. It's not. Them. It's not wrong. Yes, There's it is. No if you no, took no. those, if you took those TARP funds and you split it up with every adult in America over the age of eighteen, everybody would have gotten seventy thousand oh, dollars. Then you have God. a right into that that their debts are paid off beforehand, okay. before they see a dime of that. That would have I will say, inflated and held up the economy better than just giving eighty billion dollars to eight banks. So it was eight hundred billion. <laughs> yeah, it whatever. was a, a lot stupid of money. amount of fictional money that doesn't mean anything because right. you have nothing to actually hold it against other than our guns and our word. So. Again, I, I had this argument before in the past with another engineer, and we were like, at like, if there were knives on the table, we would have gotten in trouble. And it was this, like, the TARP wasn't wrong if you don't look at it in the sense of morals. If you look at it in the sense of business risk and moral hazard, I guess, but really just business risk, it makes complete sense that the powerful people, like in this case, like the banks and insurance companies and their underwriters and so people on. People who have all the money, yep. They have all the money. But they know that they're not going to fail, right? Because if you let them fail, you're going to let a very important organ inside this company, like inside this country, just die. Like you so can't then live that makes your it heart. not capitalism. It is welfare for the rich. It is definitely welfare for the rich. So in this case, they said, okay, we're dialysis. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to play a game of chicken, right? And who's going to um, fail or who's going to lose first? That's what it was. And the government said, okay, you win because if you guys lose, then we all lose. So if you look at it from the perspective of them playing a good hand, like they did a very, the banks did a very good job of getting the money from the taxpayers. That's why the former would, CEO of Wells Fargo had a $40 million severance package. Right. And I'm sorry. Who, almost who, bankrupting who's, his fucking who's company. We all, who's we all lose when when uh, we we all lose? Like, okay. is that everyone? Or is it just rich people? Everyone. Those that have stocks in Wells Fargo. So no. what would happen in a case where most companies are leveraged out? So they don't have a lot of money in the bank. Like if I work for my precious car company and it makes really nice electric motorcycles, right? I'm going to have zero absolute fucking dollars in that account. I don't want a lot of money. Like I want to be able to have enough money for operations, but I don't want a lot just sitting there because that means to st like, and I'm, I'm a public company. That means to investors like this fucker doesn't know what he's doing. He needs to put his money back into R and D because that's a healthy company. That's what they do. But if you have too much money, then it's, it's really attractive for another company like Harley Davidson to just acquire you. And then when they acquire you, they acquire your billion dollars that you have. And then now it's theirs and they could use that to buy. It's really tricky. You don't have too much money in your account. <laughs> so what you so do. So maybe capitalism is kind of broken and a stock no, market. No, no, is... this is just <laughs> a terrible just... indicator of actual economic no, health. This, it's yeah. just, this is just how companies run. Like you have cases but... where. You have to worry about people buying you out because it is a public company. So people who have, once they have 51% of the shares, now you're screwed. But if you're, okay, so if I'm a private company, now I, either case, I'm public or private, I'm going to have a lean budget. Like this is just what companies do to, to be able to survive in this economy or any economy. Issue is I'm a little motorcycle electric company. I don't, I need to get a loan. 
to be able to, to finance my guys. My competitors are also doing this. So everyone is on the same page. But now I can't get a loan to be even be able to hire my next R&D innovation because all the banks are fucked. So what am I going to do? Oh, well, small motor, motorcycle electric company fails because they weren't able to secure a loan. But everyone that's like me, which is a vast majority of companies that are kind of like cash strapped and just always depend on loans that they could easily get are now gone and they can't even go and do a dividend in their stocks because the stock market's fucked now. Now a lot of companies are failing and so everyone gets pain. This is a run not only in the banks, but on all the fucking companies that just mismanage their shit, but they also do that because every other company is mismanaging their shit. And if you mismanage to a point, it's a competitive advantage. So everyone's fucked here. No, you mismanage until the government bails you the fuck out. Yeah, right. basically. So but it's broken a... and terrible. And we, why are we doing it this way? It seems really irresponsible. <laughs> this is just how businesses are run. Yes. Like... Yeah, I, I realize this is the argument from tradition, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, but... you're not explaining why the system is good and so why we should You're just telling it. us that's just the way it is. Not, yeah, that's, that's not all why you're saying. It's... All right, why the way it is... Okay, I'll explain why it's run this way then. No, 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 why it's good. Why, yeah, why it is it's a, good. Why, why is it the healthy system? and acceptable to do this okay. over... When it runs well, right, under good conditions, you'll have lean companies that are innovative and are producing value-added activity to the economy. So, like, okay. I don't have to use a shitty rectangle. My rectangle is better, and it produces more economic output for everybody. So a good example is a Microsoft spreadsheet is way the fuck better than it was 100 years ago when it didn't exist. But yet productivity has expanded. So that's great. That's great for all companies. So companies that run lean and then companies that produce value also produce this kind of knockoff, knock-on effect for other companies to run more lean, to produce more value, and so on and so on. So the system, when it runs well, runs very well for us all, for especially developed nations like us, so we can enjoy a reasonable, decent standard of living. Over but at what year. point does it fail, Phil? Well, it's really fine-tuned to not fail. So when it fails, it really doesn't work very well. No, no, no. It, it, it's it like a fucking before. train wreck. Well, that's the thing is, it's like a train wreck. You know, we're going, we're going full steam ahead, running lean or whatever. And as long as we have the right amount of coal to shovel into the engine, it's fine. But when we're out of coal, or if there's a fucking bump in the track, it could be we either lose steam and it stops, and it takes a shit ton of energy to get it going again, or we literally run off the tracks and it's a fucking disaster that kills many people okay so in <laughs> so, usual in usual cycles right yeah, not, most of the I'm time we don't see history, train accidents do we but if i'm gonna be looking at Just it from a show. risk reward perspective you son of a bitch <laughs> you shouldn't be like uh, it should be like a sine wave right something smooth goes down and goes up you motherfucker right it shouldn't be like step function zero one zero one like that is a terrible system regardless of whatever economic system we have and you'll see that in terms of like warfare or famine or cases where Things there's extreme struggle natural disasters you'll have zero one zero one zero one I mean, you and, can control war well if Fair. you're good at it uh, but, you can yeah and that's been min- america's game for coming up onto a century we learn from the british but the yeah. problem here is that <laughs> What you really want is a stable economy. Economies are thriving in stable environments. Like that's right, basically but the bubble economy that we've had for the last 50 years is not stable. And that is the economy that we have had, period. Okay. So when it comes to stable environments, we're talking about rule of law. We're talking about no famines. We're talking about no wars in our front doorsteps, right? Like we're so talking about Christmas things land that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. We're talking about things that, yes, there are going to be declines and, yes, there are going to be rises. But this is a natural thing that's actually pretty good for us in terms of a macro scale. So you don't want crappy companies that exist out there. I'm looking at you, SAP and Oracle, that just (laughs) make us live a really shitty life. But they're just there because of inertia. And so when things dip down, it makes companies that run off inertia disappear because they're not supposed to exist. And a new up-and-comer can come in and provide innovation and value-added activities again. So it's not like it's a terrible thing if it dips down. The problem is if it goes one and zero, it's like we saw in the bubble of 2008. That was a real fuckery. Or 99. Or or 99 for the tech. 91 or 91 for the Cold War ended. 77 because Reagan fucking, well, actually that was Carter and that was oil. Like every one of these things have a reason why. And everyone says, well, shouldn't you dealt deal with the oil kind of embargo and OPEC at that time, that, that cartel, Carter, 
It's like, well, yeah, if you would have known that, you probably would have been able to prepare for it. But again, that's armchair Monday, you know, quarterback type of analysis, right? This is hindsight bias. Oh, what about in 91? Shouldn't you have expected the Cold War to end? And that's why all of our defense went kind of wacky and a lot of people lost their jobs. It's like, yeah, no, you can't fucking predict that, man. Like, you could do but that you, afterwards, you can, I suppose. Because there's an absolute decline in Russian foreign policy throughout the 80s. And it wasn't Reaganism that defeated it, but it was writing on the wall that that whole uh, system of the USSR was going to collapse because you had dissent, vocal dissent, that wasn't there 30 years beforehand. Ah, okay. Yeah, if you knew about this, but right. No, it's not it's, knowing about it. It's there. Acting. It's, it's, you, you, you know about it. It's just acting on it. it and, mm, and people mm. just don't want to do anything. People don't want to catch a fall in life. It's inertia. Yeah, it's, it's inertia. inertia. And it's the same with the 2008, like, this is the one I'm most re- like knowledgeable in because I, we all lived through it mm-hmm. so oh couldn't you know that oh, housing well, prices were, generation yeah this is our banner right yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is our theme don't you know that housing prices were so unrealistic how could you have not realized this you know obviously this would have yeah. failed it's like yeah, yeah i i make we, you know twenty three thousand dollars a year i have a half a million dollar house yeah right well, what's wrong it's with like, that you listen guys you motherfuckers like <laughs> this is so obvious after the fact Right, but actually, it was very obvious about ten years before or five years before. But people were still making money out of it, so it's a game of catching a falling knife. And so, like, you kind of want to catch it at the right time. But at make what point it someone else's problem. Knife, no, no, no. At what point it's, is the sort of Damocles? It's it's not even that. <laughs> it's leaving the problem for someone else to solve. Yeah, so that's the other issue is that yeah, no politicians... one wants to catch the falling knife because it fucking sucks, and you're going to cut your hand. Whoever yeah. whoever's left with the problem is going to... But who's often left with the problem? It's the American taxpayer. Yeah. And yeah. not rich but, people. No, but where do you think these, where do you think really these leaders about come from? People. Yeah, I am. I'm right, more like, angry about just, <laughs> like... So I'm a goddamn socialist. You about, know this. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't have anything against I have issues with capitalism necessarily. I just, I... Look, I, I, I have issues with capitalism I have as issues well, with but... people who don't fucking take the problems as they come and who just leave it for someone else Look, to solve. That's what I have an right. issue with. I, I'm really energetic about this discussion because I want to <laughs> ask you this simple question and I think it's going to answer I, this whole fucking problem we are but in. But we're going to have to save that for another is... episode, Phil. As no, we no, 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 no. Let, no. let him finish. I'm curious what he's saying. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> no! <laughs> Phil! <laughs> You're not allowed. Next time on Isn't It Obvious, where we just completely leave it on a cliffhanger and never talk about yeah. it ever again. Like, it never happened. Ah. We don't owe you anything at all. I think so I'm more upset about seven this. seven years, and maybe we'll get to it next. No. Does that remind you of anyone? Bye, Mom. Oh, my God. I hate you so much. Are we actually stopping, or are you going to finish? I'm stopping. I'm ah, stopping I hate now. you. Fine. Fine. All right, I'm stopping. <laughs>